Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Kristen and today you need to curl up, get comfortable because I have 10 books um, that I read in the month of July to recap for you all. And I have some big opinions on some of them. So get comfy, get ready, let's get to it. Okay, so July was a really good reading month for me and I did read 10 books in July, which is pretty good for me. And um, I think that's mainly because I went on vacation. I spent a lot of nights just reading and um, I read some really good books and I really read some flops this month. So um, I do have quite a few opinions. So I think this should be an interesting video. So without further ado, my first book I read um, was The Last Flight, which was my June, I think June book of the month club read. And I got really excited about this book because the idea for it was really, really good. Um, it's about two women who need to um, escape their life for, um, lives for different reasons. And they end up meeting and making a plan to swap plane tickets at the airport. And... Um, to give themselves kind of a head start uh, because they know people will be looking for them and During this process one of the planes goes down and there are no survivors. So it is really just an interesting um, storyline uh, It did keep you guessing all the way into the end But um, I thought like the in-betweens and the execution of it could have been just a little bit better But it really really was a good book So I gave it four out of five stars because it did it was a really interesting book um, and like I said, it did keep, keep me guessing. Um, I really liked the two main characters. Uh, I did not really see the storyline for one of them coming. So I thought that was really cool. Um, so two female characters, two strong female characters. Um, and overall a really, a really good book. So four out of five stars for The Last Bite by Julie Clark. And the next book I read was A Court of Thorns and Roses. And this is one where I say that I can't believe I've never read this before or read this series. And let me tell you, it did not in any way disappoint. It was amazing and I cannot wait to continue reading the series. I believe this will go down as one of my favorite series. Um, if it continues on this like slope of, uh, upward slope of being really good. So... Um, Court of Thorns and Roses is a, uh, what, a fantasy about, uh, fairies in the fairy realm and, um, humans, and I don't know if it's considered a Beauty and the Beast retelling, but it has that vibe to it. Um, I should probably look that up, but it has that vibe to it. The main characters are, um, are really cool. Are really strong and it took me forever to like actually say I think it's Feyre's name right um because I just was saying her name all wrong and then finally I looked in the back of the book and it tells you how to like actually say the the names like she has this like really great little page it's like here's how you say them it's Feyre and Tamlin and, and everything but um I I really did like it I I'm not super in love with Tamlin. I don't know how other people feel about it because I haven't really seen it. But, like, you know there are some male, like, characters and you just love them. And I'm just not like that with him quite yet. Maybe I will be. I'm a little bit torn between some of the characters. And I don't know really, like, how I feel about them. It was so good. Um, anyway, so Feyre gets dragged to the um, fairy realm with the Fae because she kills a wolf that turns out to be a fairy. And she gets pulled in and it's um, pretty much she might break the curse that the prince is under and his kingdom is under. So kind of has, like I said, that Beauty and the Beast vibe, but I just can't say enough about it, and I don't want to give too much away, but if you have not read this, pick it up, because it was so, so good, and I'm so excited. I have A Court of Mist and Furies 
coming um, in the mail waiting on it. So I am totally on board with this whole series and very, very, very excited. Next on my list is Sorcery of Thorns, which is another YA fantasy. I really thought the idea of this story was really interesting and really good. So um, the main character in this book, she is working in um, these huge libraries that house, oh, well, she works in one huge library that houses grimoires and these grim grimoires kind of speak to her and she can kind of feel them and feel how they feel and and um they have different they're about different things they have different powers and stuff like that and if they're not taken care of then they grow to be these large like monsters and she wants to train to be one of the people who kill these monsters and stuff so um in her library one gets loose and kills um the head of the library and she gets implicated in it and she gets dragged off to um, what she thinks is going to be a trial. But it, on her way, it turns out, you know, it comes becomes clear that she wasn't the one who did it. And um, anyways, it's just this world of magic. And she's always grown up thinking that magic is bad. But um, she kind of gets thrown into the magical world. And like straight smack in the middle of it and there's all kinds of um, things going on around her uh, plots to destroy and unleash demons and it's it's a lot going on but it was really really good and I gave it four out of five stars because it was a really good book um, full of magic and full of uh, adventure and those kinds of things so it was one that I really did enjoy and really liked. I liked the ending um, and how everything turned out. I was really impressed with the main character so four out of five stars. I do recommend this one. Next on my list is Sea of Monsters by Rick Riordan. You all know that I'm going through this series. I gave this one four out of four stars as well just because it didn't have um, that like I don't know, oomph that the first book had. Uh, it is really good. In this one, um, Percy and Annabelle are back at it in another adventure, another quest, um, because Grover is in trouble, and so is their camp, so, um, so is the tree that um, guards the camp and has the warts and everything, and so they go on this adventure. Percy finds out that he has... Um, I don't want to, I mean, this is an older book, so spoiler alert, Percy has um, a half-brother, and it's just really interesting uh, to see where they go with that storyline and, and everything, but I just didn't think this one had the oomph that the first one did, and of course, this is a reread for me. I have already read it before, but um, four out of five stars. Okay, guys, so this one, I have never sat down and read a graphic novel before. Um, didn't really, have never really had the urge to, didn't really know how I'd like it. I got one in Owl Crit a couple months ago, so I was like, okay, so I'm going to read this one. And that is Witchy. And it is a very beautifully drawn graphic novel. But let me tell you that I learned that graphic novels are not for me. <laughs> I gave it two stars. I don't, I just, and it wasn't just because of like I, the reading, like, having to read it the way you have to read a graphic novel. I just did not like the story. It was just blah. Like, and I know you can only fit so much into a graphic novel, I guess, and so many detail, but there just wasn't a lot of detail to go behind it. It was obviously a couple, I mean, an hour read for me. I just did not like it. I am not, I will not be picking up another graphic novel, and please don't crucify me for that, but I... I mean, if you have one that you think is freaking amazing, then maybe I'll try it. But I did not, cannot, did not, nope. Two stars. I very rarely give two stars. And I think I gave two stars on two books this month. <laughs> I was really harsh. But I, mm, nope. So, this will probably be one I give to somebody because I don't think I want it. It just was not good for me. Um, if you want to know what it's about, um, it's about witches and the strength of your um, 
magic has to do with how long your hair is and this girl tries to hide it because her dad was killed because his hair was so long and she runs away and cuts all her hair off and then she finds these like people who are going against the government ish thing and just was it I don't know she meets a raven that talks to her me nope no 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 okay next um is incendiary by Zoraida Cordova and this was also this was a fairy loot book and it came in Owlcrate as well so I gifted the one the Owlcrate one to someone but um I was looking forward to this story really thought it was going to be great because of the um the back of the book you know the book cover and made it sound really interesting and it wasn't a horrible book I gave it three out of five stars just because um I, just, I thought they could have done more with it. I and I say this a lot. Like the store, the plot was good. The plot was good. Um, I just really thought that they could have done more with it. I pretty much guessed what was happening halfway through, um, so that was really easy to piece out what what was actually happening in the book. And um, I don't know. Uh, it's again like. Um, there are people who do, who have um, innate magic, so magic that they um, just possess that other people don't, and they're called the Mora. And um, I wanna say there are four different types, and the girl, the main character, her magic is very, very rare. Um, she can steal memories from people, and so she's sought after, and um, she actually grew up in the palace um, because she was kidnapped when she was younger and they used her to take memories from people and even sometimes take all their mem memories and just kind of leave them as a shell. And the Mora people are trying to, um, trying to, f like, free themselves to make themselves, um, able to, like, live without persecution and things like that. So, um, she ends up being rescued and goes in with, um, the Mora and, then fights against the kingdom and the king and everything. And uh, she ends up having to go undercover because the love of her life is um, is taken. And I just thought that it could have been done a little better. They could have added more. It wasn't a horrible book. I do think some people will really, really like this one a lot. It just um, didn't hit it for me. So three out of five stars for this one. Okay, next on my list is Evil Thing by Serena Valentino. And this is one where I have really strong opinions because if you've watched my videos, you know that I absolutely love this villain series. Some of the books fall a little bit flatter than the others, but overall the series is really, really good. And there are a couple of the books that are just amazing. Like Mother Knows Best, I love that one about um, Mother Gothel from Rapunzel. But this one fell so far. Flat. I gave it three out of five stars. Um, I did contemplate too. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Um, it is the backstory of Cruella, but and and this the I guess thinking of the story and what would be her backstory, she did a really good job. It was just boring. It just was. I it had no like exciting you know, really, really exciting parts to it. Um, it was really, really slow going. Um, I don't really know what to say, except for I was just extremely disappointed and I hate that because I love this series. And I don't think it has anything to do with me not being a huge fan of Corello or the 101 Dalmatians. Um, I just think that it fell really, really flat. It was, yeah, she grew up in, in London or and she was high class and it was just boring day to day she did the you know it was it just was not very um I didn't think it was super imaginative for her uh, I guess she is a little bit of a different type of villain because there's no magic involved with her really and um and she's not like some like I don't know beast type I don't know but it was just so 
boring. I was so sad. So I don't really re recommend this one um, unless you're just trying to go through the series. But this one doesn't even follow along with the series. So you don't even have to read it to get the series um, to understand what's happening in the series. So up to you guys. But I, I did not enjoy this one. And I, I'm so sad to say that because uh, I do love this series. All right. Next, I am so excited about this one, guys, and to show it to you because it was everything I dreamed and more. Um, this is Joe and Laurie, and it is a love story retelling of Joe and Laurie from the little from Little Women, and I just love it. Five out of five stars. I think that that the authors did an amazing, amazing job. At first. I was a little miffed that they were messing with some things, and I do love Little Women, so I was a little miffed at first, and I had to kind of get over myself a bit, but once I got over myself, I just fell in love. Um, if you know anything about Little Women, even the movie, um, so Jo is the one writing Little Women in the book. Um, she, at the end, has Little Women, the book, um, that is based off of her life with her sisters and her mom and Laurie, obviously. And this book is placed in the middle of her first installment of Little Women and her second installment. And so um, you are kind of thrown in the middle of the Little Women book and, but not really. <laughs> I don't want to give away too much, but um, so it's as if Jo is, has written Little Women the first installment and it is a, a hit and now she has to write the sequel and to her Little Women was loosely based on her family loosely based so you have to kind of get over the fact that what happened in the Little Women book might not have happened in this book so it might have been fiction she might have fictionalized it if that makes any sense I know I'm getting all excited but she might have fictionalized it and it might be a little bit different um, so I had to get over that because I was so like, oh, but this happened in Little Women. But it didn't happen in this book because she had fictionalized it in her writing of Little Women. And so, but this is the love story that we all wanted to happen between Joe and Laurie. That, admit it, we all wanted them to be together. I have never gotten over the fact that they weren't. I have never gotten over the fact that she ended up with somebody else in Little Women. So this was everything that I wanted and more. And it was so good. So good. So I will probably read this again in my lifetime. Pick it up. Get it. Just get it. Just, it's so great. So exciting. Oh, the like romantic in me. Just, I can't even. It's so good. So good. Pick it up. <laughs> Next I have Fierce Like a Firestorm, which is the sequel to Wicked Like a Wildfire. Um, is that what it's called? Yeah, Wicked Like a Wildfire. Um, I know I had said that I wasn't super duper into um, Wicked Like a Wildfire, but it ended kind of like on a cliffhanger that I wanted to finish it. And I did. And this one was kind of fell within the same thing. Three out of five stars. Um, a little more interesting. Uh, this one really had me kind of warring with myself because um, one of the main characters has feelings for, um, I think it's Joel or I don't know how to say it, who is actually deaf in the book. And she actually has, she comes out with feelings for them, for him, and it kind of just, I don't know, I kind of liked him more than the guy that she liked in the human world so I struggled a little bit with that because I'm like why do I like death like I shouldn't like him but um it it was a, I would say a little bit more interesting than Wicked Like a Wildfire but still just didn't hit it for me um so uh the sisters in this and in, in this installment of this series are um they have kind of cracked the curse that was in the first book but they haven't um completely like uh, done away with it and because of that there's a new evil that is um, being released and they have to defeat him but there's a lot of loss um, on the way to that so three out of five stars but I mean worth trying out because you might like it better than I did but just fell a little bit short for me 
And last, another one that I have big opinions on is Love and War. Um, the sequel to um, Alex and Eliza, um, which is about Alexander Hamilton and Eliza Schuyler. And I don't know, I don't want to say it's because I watched Hamilton and liked it, that this book was just meh for me. Um, obviously, Hamilton is more historically based. This one is loosely, loosely based. But um, this one was just boring. I mean, I loved Alex and Eliza. Like, I loved that book. Um, and I still say that I love that book. But this one was just another one that was just so boring to me. And I really, really just had to, like, trudge through it. Because it was not, it didn't hit the mark for me. This is about after they get married and they get settled in New York. And he gets settled in his law practice. And it just was a day-to-day -day retelling. And it was... It was just largely boring. Just not going to lie. So I am disappointed because I did love Love and War a lot. And so I am disappointed that this one did not hit the mark for me. And I did give it 2 out of 5 stars. Um, I hate that, but got to be honest, you know. And I just was super bored with this one. So I am not going to go on and read the third book, I don't think. Because I really struggled to even get through this one. I really don't think I'll keep going um, with it unless somebody can change my mind. So, not going to do that. I, I don't want to say it's because I watched Hamilton and loved it so much and then just got him all up in my head and my feels about it. But maybe that's why. I don't know. So, it just was more of a day-to-day -day retelling of what they do day-to-day. -day and it was not very exciting. So, there it is that for that one. So, 10 books this month. Woohoo! I've already started for August, and I'm hoping to get through a good amount in August, but the books I feel like I have in August are thicker um, than the, than some of the ones. Like, I read a couple of, like, that, that were, like, really quick books in um, July, so I don't really have many of those quick books for August, but... Um, they are much thicker, the books that I do have. So, don't know if I'll get through as many, but very excited about what I do have going on for August. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you disagree with me, let me know in the comments. If you agree with me, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you thought, and I will see you guys next time. <music>